Hey everybody. So what well, one of the players brought their gunpla to the to the table and we're building it, you know, throughout session and the DM got progressively more and more annoyed and they said, "All right, you know what? If you like your gunpla so much, why don't you play a gun gunpla game?" And then that player said, "Okay, maybe I will." And then got up and left. So I guess I guess session's canceled. Yeah. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Yeah, that's all you got. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's all I got. Sorry, bud. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Seemed like the there was maybe a little podcast. more there. Or you, okay. <clears throat> right, look, we're 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 sort of riding by the seat of our pants on this one. I this uh -huh. this came to me basically in a fever dream. Uh, a dream in another dimension, in another life. Yeah, and by all that, I mean someone DM'd me the topic of today's <laughs> of today's I, episode. <laughs> But before we get to that, uh, it's me, Isaiah, back at it again at Krispy Kreme, and I'm here with Josh. Ooh, Krispy Kreme. I am here. It's true. So apparently, fun fact, there, there are almost no Krispy Kremes in Texas because Texans don't like light, fluffy donuts. They want, like, pound cakes in donut shape. They want what whole in donut thing. shape? Like pound cakes. Pound cakes? Yeah, just the densest, most sugar-slathered donuts you've ever had. Every... every donut place I've been to in Texas, you eat one donut and you feel like you've eaten like a slice of pound cake. It just sits in your stomach like a ball lead. All that to say. Oh, that's um, really gross. Yeah, I found a Krispy Kreme today while I was driving. Oh. Uh, It's almost two hours away from my house. Oh. And it's uh about 20 minutes northeast of the, the, the like international airport. It's the only reason why I knew it was there. <laughs> I see, stumbled upon I see. it yeah well that's unfortunate for you ain't it yeah fucking yeah. texans they would want the densest nastiest shit they're not bad they're just dense like them them motherfuckers is yeah yeah no i'm good i would i would prefer no <laughs> fair enough uh now d dear listeners you might be like well, that was a pretty shitty cold open. What the fuck is this about? Let me tell you. Uh, I, as I, of I, like I, three days ago. Wasn't going to accuse you, but all right. That's fine. As of like three days ago, one of my best friends DM'd me uh, a rule set for a game called Mobile Suit Skirmish, which is a uh, tabletop war game in the vein of like Battletech in Warhammer 40,000. About my favorite thing, uh, my current hyperfixation for the last three years, Gundam, which is super cool. Because it takes uh, the Gundam models that I spend way too much money on, frankly. An amount that we will not discuss or disclose. I, hundreds. Hundreds I, of dollars. I, like, try, I really tried to give you the out there. I really did. I know. But I look, you got to call a spade a spade. It's a lot of money. Like, it, I have a great pile of shame in my corner. There's like seven mobile suits I haven't built. Regardless, it turns those really cool models that I build and just display into game pieces that you can deploy on a field and shoot the shit out of your friends with. It's very cool. I was going to ask you where the where you found this, but that question. It's a fascinating story. So I technically I knew about it before that DM. While I was at the wedding, uh, you know, as in my my fun little jaunt into the warp, as we know it, uh -huh. uh, I spent some time at a game store where I played, uh, you know, a fair amount of Warhammer 40K. And it is a very fun game with, I think, a bit of rules bloat that they're never going to get rid of me things because it's just too baked into the game. I was going to say, um, it kind of just is that way. Yeah. But after I had left, I had received a DM from this friend being like, hey, they're playing a, a Gundam war game. Do you know what that's about? And I was like, no, please do tell. And I got sent some pictures. And then he said he'd look into it. And then like three days ago, I got this and... uh no, I mean, this is great. This is awesome. <laughs> I see. Uh, yeah. uh, is this, I, I assume no, based on the look of the product. This is not official in any way, right? No. No, and not at all. I would assume that also means this is not be sold, being sold for money because then it would be shut down, yeah? Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as I'm aware, no, it's not being sold for money. It's just you can go to their website, which I believe is a WordPress page, That's and just right. download it. Uh, the right. game itself is currently, yeah, fair. 
is currently in its second edition. Uh, it was released in the spring of 2018, as far as I'm aware. And originally, it only covered the rules for the Universal Century timeline. Don't worry about it. Uh, it has expanded quite a bit to include for, a pretty for wide those, variety of suits. For those who are not deeply Gundam pilled, uh, Gundam has a couple of different universes from which the animes take place in. Universal Century is sort of the original timeline. Yes. Uh, those of you who may have watched the Seed shows on Netflix, that is the Cosmic Era, and if you, anyone watched Gundam the Witch for Mercury, that is the Ad Stella Era. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as the rules are concerned, nothing from the newest stuff that's come out and I don't know if they're making any more of this, to be frank, because we haven't I, I based on the admittedly not a lot of research I did today. Uh, there doesn't seem to be much going on with this project anymore. Well, but, they they kind of can't. It's like, yeah, with it not being official, they can't they can only do so much, you know, because they don't have any funding how much effort I'm sure the person who makes it, you know, has a normal fucking job. They have to like deal with, <laughs> you know what I mean? I, look, you know, they could, they could do the ultimate TTRPG homebrew loophole, which is support me on Patreon and which I can use that money to fund this project. And you're not funding the project directly. They may so be it's in a weird gray. Uh, yeah, area. I mean, there's a, there's a potential there. I, honestly, probably what their best option would be to, to do is take the product they have currently made and pivot and make their own mecha thing. That's not Gundam, but looks very similar to Gundam, you know? Yes. That lets you just so happen to deploy Gundam suits. <laughs> yeah. You can happen to use Gundam suits as you want, but it's technically not a Gundam game. Yeah. yeah, instead of it being called a gym, they're going to call it a Team. GM. Yeah. And, it, and it'll be or pronounced Or they're just going to call Tim. it a JM, in which case it's going to give me an actual fucking <laughs> <laughs> No, it'll be pronounced Tim and it'll be spelled TM. I'm going to scream. If you don't know, <laughs> one of the like original mobile suits in Gundam is, is called the gym and it's spelled GM. And a lot of people refer to it as the GM. But, but no, dear listeners... In the anime and all the expanded materials, they just straight up call it Jim. Jim. The Jim. And all of its myriad different versions. The Jim, the Jim Command, the Jim Cardigan, the Jim Sniper, the Jim Spartan. All made all, all Jimbo. All Jim Bob, Jimmy Bim. Jimmy Jim. Jimmy, Jim Jam. I, I must say, you know, we're really hitting a niche within a niche within a niche right now. <laughs> we're we're diving deep here. Look, it's fine. It, it what reason or do we have our own podcast if not to talk about our weird interests that people will maybe listen to on the internet? No, I, I, I'm aware. I just think it's funny because we're going from tabletop already niche to war gaming, more niche to Gundam, even more niche. Fair. To be fair, though, <laughs> and I will talk about this later, there is actually a tabletop roleplay aspect baked into this game, which is I, kind I mean, of neat. I mean, you know, war gaming is... Uh, a lot of people don't think about wargaming as like when you say tabletop RPG, right? People think about, you know, your D&D, but, you know, D&D literally came from wargaming. So pulling, you know, looking at war games and using those to inform your tabletop game is really not that outlandish of a thought because that's I mean, that's literally what Gary Gygax did, you know, so. Yeah, true. And, you know, people don't think this is the case, but wargamers put a lot of roleplay into wargaming. A lot of them do, yes. Uh, like, you hear a lot of stories about, like, someone being like, oh, this is my Space Marine commander, and for every battle he I win with this character, I, I'll take a head unit from the enemy army, and I'll put it on the base of my, my this character to show how many wins he's got. I'm like, that's roleplay. That's... You're yeah. literally role playing this dude, like you know, yeah. Jim Bog, Jim Bob Mick shit kicker, the like bane of orcs. Yeah, yeah. I mean that Jim Bob that's, the that's role play. Yeah, what what did my buddy, a friend of mine, had a, a name for a a grot? What did he call it? It was a what? Uh, uh, yeah, a grot boss snipkit. Yeah, 
Yeah, if you really care about Grot Boss Snipkit, then yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> you're gonna put a lot of time and effort into thinking about why he is the way he is. And that's super cool. And it, the, this game, uh, we're just kind of jumbling the notes at this point, but this game does actually allow you to do that by playing these, uh, they're called campaigns, but they are campaigns in the actual definitive sense. use of the word campaign, which is a sequence of battles in war yep. where you can create like an overarching narrative where there is role play with it's almost rules non-existent. It's literally just kind of role play. And then you play out missions with your models and your pilots who you get to name and customize uh, gain well, EXP a, based on how they do. There's a story mode version. There is, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's more in-depth than I would have thought to give it credit for. Like, there's a full EXP layout for how to do everything. If you deploy in combat with the pilot, you get a certain amount. If you survive the battle, you get a certain amount. If you kill a certain amount, you get a certain amount. If your character witnesses the death of a friend, they get a certain amount. That's super cool. This is just really making you want a full Gundam role playing. It, you have <laughs> no fucking idea how bad I want an actual Gundam tabletop game. Yeah. It would be the only thing I run. The only thing. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't know what universe that could even this but yeah. I it's I mean the easiest thing is just to do the like uh, uh, the SDG generation cross race games where it's just a weird multiverse event where all the Gundam characters are like what what's going on like oh, I, I, is just casually hanging out with Amuro it's a good oh, time. I, I just meant from a purely business standpoint I just don't see how that could exist like as an official product and everything I mean, you say that, but Namco, sorry, uh, yeah, Bamco have put out games for like the Kono Suba RPG and True. the new Gundam uh, TCG that's coming out. Will it be particularly well made? Yeah, I mean, who knows? Uh, eh, eh, probably not. Japan, Japan, but role I think playing, it could exist. Japan role playing games are. are, are, are Japanese role playing games um, are kind of funny because they're, you know, they're being developed not entirely devoid of Western influence, but significantly less Western influence. I mean, D&D &D just recently got translated into Japanese. So it's they have very different in some ways. They're like weirdly behind the curve, but in other ways, they're like kind of ahead of the curve. Like design wise, like they have a lot of weird ideas because they're not as influenced or beholden to all of the stuff from before because, you know, role tabletop role playing started in as you know, started in America. Cause we're the best baby America. Woo! <laughs> <clears throat> anyway. Um mm -hmm. So yeah, it's kinda interesting to see the the couple of Japanese role playing games I've like heard of and looked at are like they're different you could feel you can this is you could feel like if even if you didn't know you could kind of tell they weren't made in the u.s you know what i mean yeah there's like design different sensibilities in the same way that if you play an american united states a u.s not american i know america's the continent blah 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 if you play a u.s i know we're not the center of the world except we are we are the center of the world but we're not I, I, you know. anyway <clears throat> sorry <clears throat> yeah <laughs> If you play a U.S. designed RPG versus one that's designed in Japan, you can like tell the difference, even if nobody tells you. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a very similar thing, like video game RPG. I mean, like Final Fantasy does not feel the same as like the newest, you know, the more recent Assassin's Creed games or whatever. That's a bad example. Those are French. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm getting at? Anyway. Yeah. Yes, I know what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, uh, I, I would want to play that like no other. Uh, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, like, just ridiculous map. Either way, uh, those you might be a little curious as to, like, if you haven't seen how 40K or Battletech... I was going to say, the, perhaps you know, we should address... War games are played. Yeah, we should address yeah, what yeah. the fuck a war game is, just, just in case. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't have any 
definitions of what a war game is, but in spirit, a war game, unlike a tabletop game, is played closer to a board game, right? Where you have, uh, like, pieces with bespoke stats that you uh, build armies out of and then f you know, make them fight a separate army. Uh, often you have things like stat point caps where you go, okay, well, you can only uh, make an army with units that equal up to a certain point amount, and that is done to sort of maintain a level of balance. Uh you deal with things like line of sight and movement spaces or movement by inches, uh, things like enemy facing. Pretty much think of your crunchiest game of Shadowrun, except it's just the combat. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I mean, so for me, the, the difference uh, spiritually that I've always described or, or thought about with war game versus tabletop is like the two key things is that war gaming is instead of controlling a singular character, you're controlling a platoon, a bunch of, you know, a bunch of different units. Uh, and you're usually tied to, you know, your, your care, the character you're playing in a war game is like the commander of the army, as opposed to a singular person. Um, and, the there, there is an objective that is very clear, which is to win the match, right? Like wargaming has a very explicit win lose condition, which tabletop games do not have an explicit win lose condition as much. Uh, so those those are like the two main no differences that I think about. Uh, and yeah, you play them when you actually play them. Yeah, they play more board game esque, as it were. Yeah. Uh, looking at uh, Wikipedia real quick, a war game is described as a strategy game in which two or more players command opposing armed forces in a simulation of armed combat. Yeah, I mean, it's yes, although that's I pretty think, accurate. I think the simulation of armed combat bit probably ends up, uh, you know, a little more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, 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 what, what am I trying to say? More. Um, it's not always that straightforward. I don't know what I was trying to say. <laughs> Fair enough. And yeah, that's but, true. Yeah. Basically. Because there are war games out there that aren't just like military man with gun, you know. But yeah. <laughs> like 40K? Well, yeah. I mean, even within 40K, yes. Because you can play alien dudes with claw hands. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Or a, a guy whose gun takes a guy and shoot that guy out of the gun. <laughs> true. Uh, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Wargaming is uh, very si similar, but different. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, with, with that sort of out of the way, uh, the way that this particular Wargame is played is by creating battlefields using, you know, diorama-esque buildings, cover, to create things like lanes of fire, um... You know, I said cover, so I'm not going to use that again. But you, you create sort of a battle scenario, and then you're able to deploy the models that you built to, you know, for display purposes, hobby purposes, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and again, each of them receiving their own bespoke rule sheet that gives you a semblance of balance and allows you to, to pit these enemy, these characters against each other in a way that's more than just playing actual maple, you know? <laughs> yes. Uh, something that I thought was really cool, actually, that I, I really like that they did this. And I love when games like this add this feature, which is they give you blank character sheets and they don't specifically tell you, but they give you all of the tools within the sheet itself to sort of homebrew and, and make your own stuff. So in case that this game never gets updated again and whatever newest show comes out and whatever new model kits come out, you have feasibly the, the the tools by which to make them yourself, which allows the hobby in the game to sort of self perpetuate. You know? What? What? Say that again. The game gives you all of the rules for making 
custom sheets in the rulebook. Oh, oh, okay. I, yeah, so in yes, case yes. the game never gets updated again, it doesn't just sort of die here. You know, yes, it's, a, yes, it, yes, it, yes. it's allowed to keep going because people like you and me could go, oh, well, I want to put the aerial in there. And then you just I, do it. I zoned out for like half a second and missed the bit at the beginning where you said that like customizable sheets part. So I was like, I was like, the game just exists in perpetuity. What? <laughs> I got you. I got you. <laughs> we caught up. Good, good, good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Something that I thought was really interesting, actually, is to anyone who's into the Gunpla hobby, you might know that when you at least look at these weird, funny boxes with the cool robot art on them, there is typically a little anagram at the top right. So you'll see HG, MG, PG, RC. Those are the Gundam grading scale, and they start at uh, entry grade, which is the simplest most bare bones builds that go all the way up to perfect trade, which are quite a bit larger, more complex, often have things like LEDs built into them. And the cool thing about this game is that it actually relies a lot on that grading system and uh, by allowing you to play not just the, the high grade units, which is the base, you know, it's the standard by which the game is done. But you are also given rules for playing things like master grades, which, like I said, are quite a bit taller. Yeah, they're yeah uh, they're larger. Which I, I I guess we should probably mention why that matters. Yes. So in a war <laughs> game where things like line of sight matter, typically line of sight is used by line of sight of base. So it's not like oh well I can see Scrimblo Bimblo's bolt pistol hanging out of cover. That doesn't actually matter as much as. Uh, if you can see the radius of the base by which the model is standing on. Uh, obviously, the bigger your robot gets in this game, in just like in 40k or Battletech, the more guns you could feasibly put on it, the heavier it is, the more armored it is, the harder it is to kill, but the easier it is to see and shoot at. So the fact that the game gives you rules to say, oh, well, you do you want to use your Master Grade Master Gundam? Sure, you can do that. Here are rules by which to do it. I, I think it's also worth pointing out. So many pre-knowledge here. Um, when when he says line of sight, he literally means you crouch down, look at the table at eye level, and literally see if you can see your target physically. Oh yeah. So yes. the and size, can... the size of the model and the size of the targets is very relevant because you actually have to literally see them, as opposed to something where Something like D&D where you're sort of measuring angles and seeing, you know, how much of my line crosses over with their token type stuff. It's like, no, no, you literally need to see them. Yes, you, that is true. And I, I have seen people use everything from, it's much you know, more the like beam. It's much more physically gone. based. Is uh, Yes, yes. Yeah. I was so fun fact about this. I keep saying like interesting fact or fun fact, but. Uh -huh. I was like kind of unsure, as you probably were too when you read this, if this game did use line of sight, because it never specifically mentions the phrase line of sight. Uh, but it talks about yeah. sight arcs. It does. Which is to say, it assumes that every mobile suit has a 120 degree sight arc in front of it. And it, it does give you a diagram to show you how just how wide that is. Some of you might not be like, how the fuck am I supposed to know what 120 is? Yeah. It references that and it bakes in rotating your mech into yes. the action economy. And then they talk about cover and it says, you know, if 30% of this is, is visible, that equals one thing. If 60% is it. So it does, in fact, use line of sight. I, it it took some research, but I, I was able to figure it out. And I think that's. I mean. When I first got into like wargaming sort of passively, I thought line of sight was kind of weird and I felt like kind of bulky and, and could lead into some issues. I've now realized as I've played a couple rounds of 40k that typically doesn't happen. It's you. Things are pretty kosher at the table. Usually speaking, people are just kind of OK to be like, uh, I don't think that's line of sight. And then you kind of go, all right, fair enough. Uh, um, I mean, I'll be honest, I personally still don't love it, um, but I kind of understand why it exists, you know? Like, yeah. And, and frankly, I think it comes up a lot less than you'd think. Uh, like, it I does mean, come yeah. up, don't get me wrong. It came up several times while I was playing. 
but it wasn't like this super noodly like, oh, do I have line of sight? It's typically you go, no, I mean, I can see the base and they go, yeah, that's fair. Uh, and then you get specific rules for like cover if you're within an inch of a, of a base and stuff like that. It It's finicky, but it's less noodly than you think. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, I haven't played war games, watched people talk about it, so I can't really say. Uh, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. On on first uh, first like on the sniff test, if you will, the line of sight stuff I've heard described is definitely something where I'm like, ah, that sounds annoying. <laughs> I also, I'll be honest, the measuring in inches to move thing, not crazy about that either. Yeah, I, I that's another one of those things where you kind of just take a tape measure and you will be using a tape measure, don't you worry. Yes. And you just kind of push it out and go, all right, well, it moves uh, just about that much. Uh, yeah, I haven't I seen know. anybody be like, well, actually, that's that's 6.38 inches. You are not allowed to move there. It's like, uh. yeah, I just. I would just prefer, I don't know, I would just prefer hexes. I just don't see any real reason not to, you know? True, Unless, and Battletech does actually use hexes. Oh, does it? Didn't know that. Yeah. Battletech maps are actually super cool. What was that game? You know exactly what I'm talking about. It was like a board game, but they used hex grids, and you could, like, build your own map. Escape? Yes. It, yeah. Yeah. It looks a lot like HeroScape. Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, that makes sense. This game specifically, uh, Skirmish does use the, the inches thing. Yeah. I, I feel like, yeah, I mean, it, I haven't played Battletech. I've, I've heard very little about Battletech, but I have a generalized idea. I think it would work just fine in a hex format or not. And I think they do mention that you can run it that way. There's a lot of really interesting uh, optional rules in this game that in my head was like I feel like these should be standard like we'll get into it a little bit later on there's there's some funky stuff going on there and like uh -huh. hell uh, we were talking about the bases the game does say like oh you know you have to use high grades right. or you should use high grades and they should be on a, a I believe a 120 millimeter base something like that but you can play it on like a high scale like a 40k has this thing called Titanicus where you fight like the giant robots of 40k, you use like the Titans and the Knights and stuff. Right, right. And they're in that game, the size of like a normal space Marine. Right. And you can, you, you can play the game like that, but there's some like noodliness because you know, the, the actual models on the base count as the mobile suits. There's some weird stuff. That's, that's kind of a bad example because that's one rule where I'm like, I'd rather just keep the high grade and make it only high grades with maybe some like offshoot stuff. But it, it has a bunch of really interesting option rules. Uh, okay. A lot like 40K as well. Like we were saying, there are, there are like very specific win and loss states. I was a little worried that this game would only be kind of team deathmatch. Like, you know, uh, you just throw dice and shoot shit. There isn't are actually uh, several different battle scenarios by which to win the game. Isn't that uh, all that Warhammer is? Isn't it only just like team deathmatch basically? No, no, no. There's a, there's a, a like, it's like six or seven different ways to play 40k. There's Dawn of War, which is, oh. um, well, actually, so you're right. Back in the Dizay, it was a lot more team deathmatch stuff. They have right. shifted to objective holding as like the main way to play. That's called Dawn of War mode, where you have uh, objective points, and then every turn that you control an objective, you gain things called victory points and command points. Uh, you can use command points to use these things called stratagems and orders, which are basically um, in each phase of play, you get to use special abilities from your your warlord. So you can make enemy uh, your character shoot again or have them reroll ones, stuff like that. OK. OK, so not exactly what I was expecting. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was just smash Gornok into into Rondonator, the space wolf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gornok, the orc, and Rondonator, the space wolf. 
these names are getting more and more cooked by the <laughs> second brother. <laughs> Tell me Gornok doesn't sound like an orc name. I, it does, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not. If I if I knew any Celtic names off the dome, I might have gone for it. But you know, that's fine. I mean, I, what was it? What was it? Uh, uh, Grot boss, nip, uh, yeah, nip snick or whatever. That's yeah. yeah. What what was it? Isn't there the 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 Margaret the Margaret Thatcher orc? What's his his his? Uh, his... Gazgul Mak Uruk Thraka. Yeah, Gazgul Mak Thraka, and then he's got his little goblin that has a really goofy ass name that like follows him around. That's like invincible. For Makari. Some yeah. Yeah. Makari. No, no, he's not invisible. He just keeps getting resurrected. Oh uh, yeah, he just comes back to life. He keeps really. dying horribly because Gazgul thinks he's invincible. Right? Pretty much, yeah. Gosbul Gosgul's basically like Makari doesn't die. Makari will always come back. And then he, yeah. he, so he keeps just doesn't, coming back. Yeah. He just doesn't die. Yeah. Rough. And this little fucking goblin is so traumatized. Rough, rough life. Rough life that little goblin has. Yeah, poor Makari. Did you did you know that his little knife is one of the strongest weapons in the game? I I remember you saying something about that, yes. Yeah, the blade of Makari, it's literally a shiv. It's like a prison shank, and it does a ass load of damage. It's like really hard to hit with or something, right? Yeah, yeah, and it almost never hits, but if it does, it's gonna murk something. Yep. I love that. It's very fun. I mean, uh, that I'm, goes back to that thing I'm always talking about where like, if you can't use an ability very often, you can make it way stronger. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how the orcs are. They The orcs hit like a truck. They just... Uh, I think they have to roll... Like a five up to hit on with their gun, yeah. so they only have like a twenty percent chance of hitting with their ranged weapons. But then they get into melee combat and they just unload on things. If you play an orc army in forty k, you are not playing meta. You will probably lose a lot. But like, if you play an orc, if you play orc army, you just can't like you. You are immune to the salty condition because you're just aware that the you're salty, not going to hit anything. The salty condition. I, look, you just you just can't get salty like that. You can't be BM'd on because you are the BM. I just I hate that you called it condition. I I mean, it's like it's the right. I get it, but it's a bit apt in it. Yeah, but I hate it. <laughs> I'm checking really quick just to to make sure how many different game modes this game has, because there's, there's a lot. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, there is five. So you have deathmatch, yeah. which is you know throw dice. Uh, let's see. Oh, weird. Okay. There is one called skirmish, where rather than deathmatch, the point is to destroy the most expensive units on the board, and you get to you basically take their points and add it to a point like gauge, and the higher that goes, the closer you are to winning. Uh, objective is like what I described at 40k. You take objective zones and you hold them for victory points. Uh, territory is, I believe you take someone else's territory. Like, you have to go in. It's like domination. Um, there aren't, like, random ones on the field. You have to literally go and take someone else's shit. And then finally, Battle Royale, which is unlike the modern use of Battle Royale. It is a, <laughs> you know, free-for-all no, it's just sort of a, a chaotic blow shit up until something dies kind of way. So, oh, I mean, five is good map. Yeah. Dear listeners, by the way, I'm, we are so sorry. We are, this is, this is scuffed, but you know, we're just, I, we're listen, just I, 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 I'm along for the ride here. Isaiah, Isaiah kind of jumped me with this one. I didn't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of prep to study time here. I, look, I didn't either. Frankly, this is this is like the last yeah. two days in a in a fever state, in a fugue state, really. I also once again zoned out for like a hot second where you're talking, so I caught. God damn, damn it! Can you? I'm stop? sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I keep like focus up. I know. Dude. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Continue. Jesus Christ. Uh, something I thought was kind of neat is, in 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 a good way, is that it takes it. What it, it seems to me, it seems like, and to be fair, like I said, I don't play a lot of war games. So I uh -huh. only really have 40k to go off of, but it takes the sort of phase based action economy in so far as, you know, 40k has the command phase, the move phase, the shoot phase and the uh, psychic phase and the fight phase. Uh -huh. There's a lot of phases. Uh -huh. uh, this game does away with 
90% of that, whereas it has the command phase and the action phase, which is cool. The command phase is pretty much your before you actually get started. Your commander units can issue their orders and use their stratagems because this game does also use command points, which I think is kind of neat. And that allows you to, again, do stuff like retreat, advance, shoot again, heal specific units. Wait, you have to um, use There's one that just lets you run retreat. the fuck away. Yeah, there's one to retreat. <laughs> I think it, it, the point is that it lets you redeploy. Oh, if you okay. successfully do it, like you can put him somewhere else on the field. Okay. Yeah, it, at first I saw that and was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I, I believe it, you use it to ambush, which is very interesting. Uh, one in again, rather than, uh, I, I, my head immediately went to magic gathering where you, um, unit will go from activated to used in the way that you like tap a card in magic tapped. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when in combat, the units have specific damage zones, which is, I think pretty common when it comes to like large scale combat, like using mechs and stuff, right? Like you have like damage to head, arms, legs, shield, body, all that. Uh, which, as like I said, just sort of denotes where the damage lands and actually plays a part into how critical hits are generated. Basically, the way the game runs it is if you deal damage that exceeds your weapon's uh, critical hit score, that counts as a crit, which is, I mean, that's cool for a million reasons. That's It's an interesting way to guarantee crits, or sorry, to confirm crits, right? It's not like... You have to roll a certain amount. It's you you deal a certain amount of damage, and that can be controlled sort of if you use the right stratum gems with the right weapon combos. Like you could have a weapon that crits all the time, but maybe doesn't hit as much. It's really interesting. Uh, when it comes to the characters themselves, the stat sheets are pretty set in stone. Right? You can't like you I, can I, make your yeah. own sheet, but if you want to play the original Gundam, the RX-78, you can't give it, you know, the beam scythe from the from the Gundam death scythe and the mini gun from the heavy arms, right? It it has its beam rifle, its uh, beam, uh, beam saber, the bazooka, and I think the head Vulcan. That's it. That's what it comes with. And yes, yeah, so each I, weapon, each piece of gear. On. I was, I was going to say, I, I noticed that, yeah, the, the suits, uh, s- the, the setup for the suit seems pretty like predetermined yeah I, they, they even say it in the rule book it was that was done to maintain balance and a semblance of it at least right i i i would i would i would be curious to see a um like a a supplement type thing that gave you options for like mix and matching weapons so i could have the beam scythe on the rx you know yeah, I mean, so I think that's where you would make uh, a unique mobile suit and you'd just use the custom rules to so say, oh, well, you know, I can use the beam scythe from this stat and I'll put it here. You know, you, you can sort of Frankenstein your own suits together in the uh, same okay. way that in 40K, you can sort of make your own army. I did not that I did not see. It's okay. in the did you get a chance to look at the actual character sheets like folder? Skimmed really brief. Fair enough. At the the very bottom, there's one rogue document uh, PDF that's a completely blank sheet. Got it. And yeah, I think that's that's where it comes from when you just build your own mobile suit. Which I, it it does actually kind of make me happy that they did this the way they did, right? Because in D and D, the game kind of gives you like a well, you can sort of do whatever you want. And I think, and it's also, I mean, it, it is build as that right by people who play it trying to get people into it they're like oh it's a game where you can do whatever you want and yeah. and i've lived this where you you know someone will look at the rules and go eh, i don't really want to do any of that uh, <laughs> and then they yep. make their own random i can't die have a million hp uh-huh. yep, 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 you know yep. character classic yep and I'm it gets kind of jank half demon half angel nephilim godchild yep 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 yeah 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 it gets kind of awkward but the fact that the game presents you and it says okay you have that model. Your model comes with these pieces. That's what this thing does. And for more advanced players, you go, ah, well, I kind of want to build my own thing. And this is for a, like a per, like a, you know, this is a custom game basically. So I'll deploy my own suit. It gives you that option, which is cool. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it lets, it eases people into things. 
in a way. I will I think- say that's a that's a really interesting idea. And I guess this is basically what. what well, no, because Warhammer kind of works the other way, right? Because you have to buy the the codex for the faction you want to play, and then get the piece the the models to go with. It is kind of interesting though. With this game, it's like, well, I have these gunpla models, so these are the units I can use. It's restrictive, but also kind of fun it, at the same time. It, it it reminds me of like it. It's like I don't know when you're. <laughs> Back in the day when fighting games, you had to go through story mode to unlock all the characters. So if you didn't have everyone, you'd be like, well, I don't like this character, but here's who, here's who I can use right now or whatever. You know, like, I don't yeah. know. There's, that's kind of fun in a weird way. Like, imagine a D&D game where you got handed. It's like, here's the minis. You have to make the character based on the mini. Like, as opposed to the other way around, you know? I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a fun idea. No, I agree. And it. It actually, in a weird way, suits itself to almost all aspects of the hobby. Well, you know, yeah, because Gunpla is already its own hobby. Yeah, but well, so but what I mean by that, right, is you have people who go, oh, well, I don't really like the grunt suits. I just like the really cool, you know, giant wings, super intricate suits. And then you, the game goes, OK, well, you can have your strike freedom. But it's a really expensive suit because it's really powerful. And that person can still go up against someone who really likes the grunt suits and has An 15 gyms. gyms yeah. And yeah, in his room, in his hobby room. And he goes, oh, but I can field all 15 of my gyms. All of my gyms. Let's small go, gyms. gamers. <laughs> and yeah, those gyms are probably going to die by the dozen. It's going to be sick. But it's going to be sick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's going to be cool as fuck. You're like, yeah, uh, you, they you even, can field your fancy Gundam. I have the Black Tri-Stars. Yeah, I have the Black <laughs> Tri-Star Dom Squad. Let's go, gamers. <laughs> I think you should do that. I, I think you should get two more Doms and make the Black Tri-Stars. Black Tri-Star Squad. Tempting. Yeah. Watching uh, watching the origin movies and seeing them, like, get their come up, and you're like, Oh, they're going to die so horribly, but they're going to be so cool for the one episode they appear in. Yeah, they're going to be cool before they go. Yeah. Yeah, it, it it allows anyone who enjoys gunpla to play this game. You know, you can be super heavy into the model building where you sand off all the seams and add your LEDs and paint it yourself. Oh, my God. But if you just really like making gyms, dude, you're in. <laughs> you're in more gyms. <laughs> And I, I like that a lot. I love the idea of some dude who's really into gunplay, but only gyms. He only has gym models. They exist, dude. <laughs> the the grunt armies that you see, it's like, first of all, you had to build all 12 of those gyms or Zawarts or Zakus. You had to sit there and build those one by one. And yep. then you painted all of them. And then you gave them a unique squad which involved you having to hand paint all the squad logos on all 12 of those gyms or Sakus <laughs> or whatever. Yep. Dude, the the grunt builders are like uh, uh, Tyranid players in 40K. <laughs> you have to paint like four times the, man, the amount of models per capita, mm, but sure. you're committed and you're going to fucking do it. You're so, you love your funky aliens. Yeah, you, they're just built different. If you're, if you're a guard player or an orc player, you're just built different. <laughs> that's good right, look I, I, I'm one of I, I'm a, a very similar mindset to Lupo where he was like I'm getting custodies I have 12 units but damn they're cool <laughs> they're gonna be sick you which is a massive L because actually in the new edition the custodies suck they really what the fuck yeah they got nerfed into the ground dude it's so bad that feels that feels like heresy Correct, correct, and <laughs> it was you know, poor, uh, our Lord and Savior Cavill was like, "I'm gonna play Custodes no matter what," and I'm like, "Oh, buddy, you are. Oh, you're committed. You're gonna play that bad army, and you're gonna play them for like five years until 12th edition comes out, aren't you?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. War gamers are just built different, man. It, yeah, I, it is kind of funny because, you know, you see people complain about additions and, and their various games versus another game in the tabletop space. I feel like the Wargamer homies sitting over there like first time. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Warhammer gets eroded 
mid um, like mid edition. So you'll buy a codex, and those codexes are sixty dollars yeah. a piece. Yeah. And you go, oh nice, I bought this codex, and then the errata will come out, and then you can literally throw that book into the trash. Oh. And you have to pay for the errata. Cool. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. And if you, for example, if you, if like you built an army that uses like lightning claws, for example, and uh, those lightning claws got nerfed. Uh huh. Well. Um. Yeah. I I hope you like green stuff. I hope you like breaking those models and putting new arms on them and painting those arms up and <laughs> all that. Oh. Yeah, that's that's rough. <laughs> they, people have actually figured out a way around this. They put little magnets in the torso and little magnets in the arms, so you can just hot swap arms. Oh yeah, no, that's yeah, actually. Yeah, it, they've made it a little bit harder. Like GW has specifically made it harder to kit bash. They haven't said that they're doing this, but they've done a lot of like where the models used to be like two arms that were pretty distinct from each other, and the body they're like molding the arm partially into the body to make it look like a more like compact pose but it ruins its kit bash ability unless you want to use the modeling clay green stuff and just fix it yourself which you could do but you're a bit of a mad lad I, I do remember you mentioning this it's it's a little goofy James Workshop really do just love stealing James your money James Workshop yeah you never it, it's uh, oh I hate that <laughs> Have you really never heard about James Workshop? I, I I don't think I've heard people refer to it that way. No, it's like talking about John Halo. It's a it's James Workshop. I, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. Doesn't mean you have to like it though. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I do not. Yeah, that's fair, bud. Uh, oh, something that I I wanted to note because I thought this was. I don't know if I like this or not, but okay. you might be like. Well, why would you not run the most powerful suits because they're strong for a reason, right? Just I'll just buy a bunch of Gundam seed suits and then they'll just dominate the game. Uh, so your pilot is something that is recorded in the game and not like your custom, my personal OC pilot. The idea is that each unit in the game, each model has a pilot inside of it. And that pilot uh, has stats like health and mind. So their physical health and their mental stability. Uh -huh. And at the start of each game, you roll for your pilot's health and mind, which affects your rolls. So you could have a strike freedom and just have rolled like shit at the start of the game where you're going to be hitting less and doing less damage and taking less hits. And you could roll a Jim who is the Chadliest Thundercock to ever exist. And that's just how it kind of plays out. And that's cool, right? That adds a level of like swinginess to where the meta never really stays locked in place. But it is really swingy and you know, you could just be like, oh, well, I'm just going to suck this game because I rolled really poorly for my health and mind and I yeah. don't have a lot of models to make up for the fact that I'm going to be rolling like dog shit for the rest of the game. You know, like I, I like it. I like the idea. I, I appreciate the effort, but I feel like it could be a little frustrating. Um, yeah, I mean, in a competitive sense, yeah, it could definitely be, it could be annoying, but I don't know from a, from a, uh, playing a game with the homies at the table kind of vibe. It, it definitely is interesting to have the concept of the pilot influencing the mech, right? Because it's, it's a mech. So it does have a pilot, so it makes sense that, you know, oh, your your power has a tummy ache today. He no shoot no good. <laughs> Whatever. He's just dealing with one of his myriad existential crises. Yeah, or he's a Gundam character, so he's having a fucking mental breakdown over something. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, is, is the assumption that the pilot is always tied to the same suit? Like you can't there's no sheet for the pilots, right? No, yeah, the, the, the pilots are, unless you play the campaign mode, faceless, kind of nameless right, right. They're just, goons. It's just some guy in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just some dude. It's not like actual, you know, so you're, you're re hyper so you're, Chad duo Maxwell. <laughs> so 
So you're sort of tracking the progression of the, the mobile suit and sort of uh, the pilot's kind of like another stat on the suit. Yes. Uh, again, if you play the, the campaign mode, the your pilot has a name. They have like right, right. personal stats that you can advance through actual level up, which will make them better and will make that less swingy. That sounds like the I mode kinda, I would rather play. I'm gonna be honest. I agree. I I actually think it'd be really cool if you guys play. If you know, if you play around the same table, um, you know, you go okay. This will this is my custom pilot, and then when you guys play together, you keep that pilot. And the the rules state that if the pilot dies, then you you know you make a new pilot and you reset their stats. But you can say, oh well, I really like this character. You can sort of build your own hero units. Whereas in 40k, you have to like, right, buy them, right? You have to buy the rules for them and their yeah, custom they're, models. Yeah, they're established. And all that. Yeah, you, you just can't go, make. Oh, you can't make your own Rebute Gilliman. There is only one robot gorilla man. Yeah, there's only one Bobby McGillicuddy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's the that's the version I'd like to play a lot more. Um, there is an optional rule, and this is what I was kind of talking about before where I kind of figured this should just be the way it plays. Uh, the way this optional rule rolls out is that uh, on a scale of six to minus four for the health and mind, do not ask why it is done this way and not just fucking 10 to one. Six to uh, minus four. Yes. Okay. I I don't, okay. I don't know. Okay. No clue. Uh, rather than... It not really. It, it starts at I think zero, and you can go up to. I think you start it. You can go to four. No, yeah, yeah. I, no, it's six to one. You can go from six to one. Uh, Wait, from one to six, you mean? Yes. So from six to minus four, uh, you roll a d six, and your health and mind are six to one. And if it goes into the negatives up to minus four, that's when you die slash you know trauma out. Uh, the way the optional rule okay. works is that everyone starts with a four in those two stats. And then you roll a D6, specifically you roll a D3, so, you know... Um, D6 divided by two. One, yeah, so it's one and two are, are minus one, two to th- uh, sorry, three to four are zero, which means you don't gain or lose any of those points, and then five to six are a plus one, which makes it a lot less swingy. I kind of prefer that. Especially if you're doing like competitive style play, if you want to get like a tournament together. So wait, what's the other option? If that's the optional rule, the the other option is that you just roll a d6, and whatever you roll on that d6, that's what that stat is. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. And then it can go into the negatives. Got it. And it goes into the negative by you just. How would it go into the negative? Wait, but. Uh, so when your mobile suit takes damage, your pilot can be damaged as well. Um, oh. Like if it's if the, the damage goes to the body of the mobile suit, uh-huh. uh, you can take specific damage types that goes from like uh, internal fire to compromised cockpit. And that does like a lot of different things. Uh, the way your character's mind is affected is if the thing they uh, they say. If. uh that unit is in line of sight of a friendly unit that is destroyed. That affects your mind. If they get a certain number of kills, that can affect your mind. If they're attacked with ah, specific okay. weapons, so that can affect your mind. It's and if a health they're tracker an enemy, that can go into the negative. Yes. Uh, something really interesting. If a mobile suit specifically has the tag frightening or terrifying, that can also affect your mind as like an AOE. <laughs> the dragon of mobile suit. Yeah, pretty much. I, I wonder, you know, I'm just going to check, I'm going to check good old Barbados and see if it has verifying because. Uh, oh, weird. It doesn't. We, I feel like we haven't gone over or I should say you haven't gone over the way the basic flow of a match is. I feel like true, true. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, I mean, we, I, 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 I don't know what order the notes situation are in, but, you know. I, I honestly, I just didn't think to put that part in, but I'm, I'm literally on the page right now, so I can just read it off. Of it. Like, I mean, the, the flow, way the general uh, flow of play works is and, and just uh, how how like the basic resolution of mechanics, not necessarily all the nitty gritty. No, no, of course not. Um, the way a typical game works is 
at the beginning, you know, at the beginning of the game, you assuming you've chosen your units, you've given them all the stuff they want or stuff you need. Or actually, you know, what? before that, the game talks about the point system, right? We've, I've said that you, you have to literally buy the weapons and gear that you use on each of your mobile suits based on a point amount. Yes. In 40K, there is a specific number that you hit. Typically, tournament standard is 2,000 points. This game does not have a point cap. This is... Which is... For for, for, for people listening context, the 2,000 points is a budget. Yes. Units yes. are so you basically a say if, point value, and you have a budget of yeah. 2,000. So if you're playing 40K, if you want... Let's say a squad of Space Marines is 100 points, and a tank is 200 points. So if you have 2,000, you can do... You know, 10 squads of Space Marines and five tanks, and that'll equal 2,000 points. This game does not work off that system. You just basically make a handshake agreement to go, well, I want to, you know, I want to use mobile suits that equal out to this amount, so you can pick stuff equal to that amount as well. Weird, uh, but okay. Yeah, I don't like that for balance reasons, because, you know, if you're if you're running the all gym squad... Let's say gyms are super cheap to field. Right. Uh, like if the RX, I believe the RX 78 is 270 points total to field. If a gym is 90, well, you can field three of those for one RX. And okay. if you go, oh, well, I want to do if you're if you're going to run 60 gyms, which you could do, and that'd be a couple <laughs> hundred dollars, but you could do it. <laughs> it. It just gets a little goofy, you know? Yeah. But yes, you, you decide on a point amount, you build your armies by picking out your gear, your abilities, so on and so forth. Uh, once the game begins, the players make something called the priority roll, which basically just decides who goes first. Initiative. Uh, the way, yes, it's initiative. The way that a turn works is that at the start of the turn, you make your initial upkeep. This is your command phase. Pretty much whenever, if you want to deploy a unit or have one re uh, uh, retreat, if you want to spend your command points and issue your orders, if you want to affect the, the field of battle in a way that isn't one of your units shooting at it, that is this phase. Um, anyone who plays magic, it's your... Uh, I was just... I was I was literally just thinking, as someone who hasn't played any war games, you describing this, is, I'm putting this mentally in my head through the lens of TCGs. Yeah. What is, what is the initial start phase i think believe it's just called your start phase right magic in magic oh man uh i don't remember i know in Yu-Gi-Oh you go draw phase standby phase yes yeah so okay it'd be like your draw phase standby phase in Yu-Gi-Oh. fair enough yeah uh after that it goes to your uh action phase and this is where a lot of the actual turn takes place in this phase, this is where your mobile suits will move, where they will attack, where they will duck for cover, all that stuff. Uh, where they will, will rout if they fail morale checks, which uh, if mobile suits take a certain amount of damage, their pilot will undergo a certain amount of mental strain. They might just peace out. They'll just leave. Uh, or they'll try to retreat. Kind of like the frightened condition in D&D, right? You can't, you can't advance. You can only retreat and you have disadvantage to hurt people. Or hurt people to hit people. I don't know why I said it like that. Uh, it's like that. Uh, it doesn't specifically call it out, but they do sort of treat it like 40k, where there is a part of the game where you shoot and a part of the game where you punch. And the idea basically being is that you will fire and approach the enemy mobile suit and then get into close quarters combat. Yeah, that's you what your suit resolve, specializes in. Resolve range combat first. Yes. And then you'll go into close combat. And then finally, you will go into your final upkeep, which is if any units have been destroyed, if any of them have routed to the point where they leave the battle, uh, if, you know, terrain has been destroyed, stuff like that is all resolved in the final upkeep phase. It's also where victory conditions are um, applied. So if you, for example, if a game only goes three rounds and we're at the bottom of round three, and you control two objectives and they control zero, you have two victory points at this phase only. Okay. There is, there's a cool little diagram they give you where it says game start, priority roll, begin turn, initial upkeep, which allows you to perform, uh, you know, your orders, drift movement, perform ambush, uh, perform orders. You select a unit that goes to perform actions. 
Uh, if you choose, you can do something called a slow action or two fast actions, which is a lot like Lancer in the uh, full action and quick actions. Yeah, a lot uh, of tabletop games have been doing that. It's a really good system. It's simple, elegant. It works. Yeah. I love action points. It's one of the coolest things. Yeah, about, uh, you know, there. it's not even <laughs> exactly action points, but it does kind of it's a, it's sort of an in-between of action points and like Dean's kind of actions. <laughs> True. It's yeah. It's like an adjacent. Yeah. Uh, from there, you, your unit performs its action. Once it is performed all available actions, it is considered used. In which case, you move on to the next unit. Once all units are used, it goes into your final upkeep. And when your final upkeep ends, the player's turn, the next player's turn begins. Okay. That. Yes, I mean, all good on that? I'm also I'm also wondering about how like attacks and stuff are made, but I, perhaps that's too nitty gritty. It's a bit in the too. weeds, yeah. I I, <laughs> I I sort of skimmed over it. Um, I yeah, know. So the way I know it's a dice pool d6 situation. Yes, it is a dice pool d6. The way it basically works is uh, there is an attacker and a defender. If uh, you are the attacker and you have either performed your aim or shoot action, You once you declare you're using that action, you must select a target, and you will um, confirm your dice pool. Once you've confirmed your dice pool, you make your uh, attack roll. From there, the defender will check their defense options, their, you know, their armor save, so have you, and they will create their own dice pool, and then you will roll off. If there are more successes on attack than defense, the attack is considered successful, there are more defense than attacks, the attack is blocked. Now, if the attack goes through and your mobile suit as the defender has uh, armor or a shield, you can choose to use that item or that armor to block the hit, which will destroy that piece, but will stop the damage from going through. If the attack goes through and it deals uh, enough damage to hit that weapon's critical number, that becomes a critical hit. Say that again. So, uh, assuming that the the attack goes through and it hits, uh-huh. yeah, you multiply the number of damage you do by the number of successful attacks. If that number exceeds that specific weapon's critical number, like it's critical uh, DC, that will therefore perform a critical hit. So, let's say like the RX beam rifle has a, a total crit number of six. Uh-huh. If you successfully hit three attacks. You've done uh-huh. three damage if the beam rifle does three damage. Now that you've hit that six, you have hit the critical number, and that attack is now considered a critical hit. How did you hit six? You just said three. Three attacks, two damage each, six damage total. Three attacks, two damage each, you said? Yes. So, yes. Yeah, so okay. if the beam rifle, like I I said, if I, it does I, two damage, you can roll three different attacks. If all three of them hit, that will it, that will equal the beam rifle's okay. critical hit number. I, I'm pulling these numbers out of my ass. Yeah, no, no, uh, I get what you're saying. The, the logic of sound. Yes, yes. Okay, I think I follow you. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't quite. Yes. Okay. Yes, it makes sense. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. I the first two times you said it for some reason that made no fucking sense. I don't. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but we got there. We're good. Okay. Math is math. Math is math. Uh, let's see. Fucking oh, math. A, little, a little fun thing for you, Josh. Uh, mm. So the G Gundam mobile fighters are actually available to play in game and they have their own special rules. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Special rules. Uh, yes. Mobile fighters lack any and all range weaponry. Ignore the fact that a lot of them do have range attacks. It's fine. Uh, I mean, yeah. They get no range weaponry, but to counterbalance their lack of the ability to suppressing fire, they are given an extra action they can take in combat and like special unique abilities. Okay, that's cool. So that mobile fighter doesn't have a gun, but he can boost two times and then hit you with the shining finger. And that'll be really fun. Can I just do the what, how which Gundam was it? Was it was it Noble Gundam where she just like twirled the twirled the ribbon and like stopped lasers? Yeah, yeah, the, <laughs> yeah. Just deflect lasers with my weird dancing ribbon thing. The weird, the beam ribbon, I think it's called. Yep, yep. 
Or uh, Rose uh, Gundam's funny cape. Yeah, the rose bits. Or, you know, yeah. the, the, oh, yeah, the time yeah. that Master Gundam used an actual piece of cloth. Oh, oh, yeah, bullets. when Master Asia used a literal... Yes, yeah, yeah. The literal sash around his waist yes. to deflect... Yes. Bullets the size of a human being. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, G Gundam's wild. <laughs> G Gundam's a great time. Remember that that's one time that series. main character in G Gundam uh, shadow cloned himself, despite the fact that yeah, yeah. it's never been done before, and there was no inclination that the no. mobile suit could do that. Yep. And everyone was like, "How the fuck did that even happen?" Yep. And he's like, "I don't know. I just did it." And then you kind of have to go. And then oh. it doesn't. I don't think it comes up again after that either, right? It just, just think nope. he did. Nope. He never does it again. He just uh, shadow clone. He just does it. Yeah. Also, yep. you know, destroyed the Eiffel Tower and the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> And the Statue of Liberty, yeah. Casually. Casually, just... You know, no committing biggie. acts of terrorism, basically. Yeah. yeah. Socks and sandals, baby. No biggie. <laughs> yep. Yep. Hawaiian shirts and bucket hats. Yeah. Just real casual, like... Yeah. OG Gundam. Crazy series. <laughs> Crazy series. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyway. I just think of the the first episode where he's like, you might have your silver feet, but I have these golden fingers. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck does that? Yeah. What bro, did what? any of those words <laughs> yeah, mean? Bro, what the fuck did you just say? Uh, He just pokes you. He basically, he just, he just reaches out and touches he, you. He got the death fingies. Yeah. Um, no actual explanation as to what those fingies actually do. They just do things like stopping oh, a river and shooting a Kamehameha or making a giant beam katana. It's a lot. It's a it's so much. Yep. They actually also give you rules for we already talked about like the larger units, master grades, perfect grades, high scales like the Psycho Gundam, as well as SD Gundams, uh, the tiny little 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 grungly dudes, uh, SD standing for super deformed, if you didn't know. Yeah, they got rules for them, too. Or the, the super deformed have their own rules? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it's very funny. Uh, something cool that I saw was... So, obviously, there are different combat environments, right? Because Gundam has combat take place in a multitude of different areas. You can have ground combat, aerial combat, space combat, so on and so forth. A aquatic combat. And this actually dictates what suits can be used where. So, for example... A, a gym ground type will have the uh, the tag space incompatible, which means you cannot field a gym ground type in space. I mean, yeah, checks out. It also changes what weapons you can use. So, for example, the new Gundam's fin funnels, the cool like the coolest thing about the new Gundam, cannot be used anywhere but space. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. So if you go, oh well, you know, I want to use my new Gundam. But I'm on the ground, that unit might, you might not choose it to be your hero unit, right? Because it won't be able to effectively use its full kit. You might choose a different unit and have the new Gundam or the abilities it can use as more of a support role. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Uh, let's... Yeah. We can also already have underwater, about... underwater fights with the Zagak. Zagak and the Gog. You actually, yeah, I didn't. Oh, you don't have the. You have the Gog. I was about to say. Gog. Yes. You only have aquatic units, but no, that's not true. You've got the Rickdom, which is a space ground type, and then the Gog, an aquatic ground type. Also, Zagak. Zagak. The Zagak in balls. I just like the name. I, it's a good name. All of the, all of the Zeon troop uh, Gundam or mobile suit names are hilarious. You've got the Gog, the Zagak. The Zaku, the Bawu, the Hamahama, uh, Bawu. Uh, the Gaza Sea, the Kuble, the other dumb ones I'm trying to think, the High Gog, the Aqui. I still, the Bawu still kill. So, a little, a little fun fact someone made some custom Bawus in the uh, Fuomoko VTuber uh, colors, and they call it the Bawu Bawus. <laughs> <laughs> for bow bows nice and I was like this is this is so dumb it's perfect so stupid truly if it exists there's a Gundam crossover for it so. I 
It's like Hello Kitty. It's just everywhere. I, yeah, I mean, Gundam is definitely proliferated a lot of media for sure. Mm-hmm. What was the other one? The, there was the Bawu and the other really sick looking mobile suit with like a seriously bad name. Rick Diaz? Uh, uh, oh, no, that one is pretty bad. I don't know. There's so many. <laughs> There's a lot. I, I I remember, I think it was the same series, but uh, I can't I remember off the top. Uh, woo, that was Double Zeta. I'd have to think. There's the Gazas, which it's, I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah. There's so many. Not important, but, you know. Not important. I'll find it. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll make a tweet about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Big doubt. But yeah, I, I, that's that's pretty much all I had. It's a pretty short episode. Just a cool little rule book. The, the rule book itself is only 80 pages, and most of that is tables. So didn't really have true, a whole lot to true. talk about today other than yeah, I mean, shouting out the series that I think is kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, unless you're going to uh, get into the canoodlies of the rules. I assume you don't want to get too rabbit hole. No, I mean, I, I don't think there's a point. I, I think with a lot of war games, I think you actually have to look at the book and see what it says, because there's a lot of there's a lot of coded language, um, a lot of tags that I just don't have the time to get into. Like, right, right. Yeah, tags are a uh, big thing in war games, it seems. Yeah. So, like, for example, if you look at the ranged weapons, a High caliber sniper rifle uh, or cannon ranging from 131 to 180 millimeters. They do specify uh, it's a considered a high caliber weapon with the equips of C and M, the tags of P, R, S, S, N and V, a reload of slow one die, meaning you roll once for one attack and an accuracy of uh, uh, accuracy on a three up, which basically means you have to roll three up to hit. That's a lot. There's a lot of coded language in there. <laughs> Yes. And frankly, yeah. even I don't know it all. Right, right, right. Um, I mean, so I guess I was going to say, do you recommend someone play this? But I really, you can't really recommend, I suppose, having not played it. But do you want to play it? Does it um, look yes, put I together play enough? This. I I think you're going to have some noodly stuff going on, especially if you go cross generation stuff. Y yeah. You know, like. The game very specifically was built on UC with a bunch of other stuff built around it. Uh -huh. I think you'd probably want to keep it century to century. So don't throw seed suits against UC suits because they're probably just going to be weaker in general. But in of itself, that kind of creates a cool style of play where if you want crazy noodly stuff and like, you know, just if you want five EFI Gundam, you okay. can play the cosmic Sarah suits. You can play the strike freedom and the infinite justice and the fucking the suits that have uh, the more the ridiculous superpowers. Yes, you can do that. But you can also go. I just want to run twenty gyms. No. <laughs> twenty gyms versus twenty zakus. We could do that. I, I'd build them if we would be willing to play. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. They're not going to be well built. Like I'm not going to do a, all the sanding and cutting that I do. They're, I'm, I'm going to snap and 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 I uh, mean, put I them together. But I wouldn't assume so. Uh, but yeah, I I, I want to play this really bad. It seems like a lot of fun. Um, and because it's actually, despite how noodly or how uh, kind of crunchy it seems, it is less crunchy than Warhammer. And I had quite a good time playing that. So yeah, no, I I definitely think if you're a fan of Gundam, if you're a fan of war games, or just crunchier combat in general, if you're like, ah, oh, this roll stuff shits for the birds, I just want to smack things. <laughs> honestly, just give war gaming a try. And I mean, if it's you like true. Giant robots. Yeah, if if you're the kind of person who doesn't give a fuck about the funny voices, then yes, looking at roll, looking at war games, so you could just like kill goblins or or in this case, kill the enemy team. Yeah, definitely an idea. I do and feel like I, I think I feel like there's a little bit of a mark. I just had a thought because you, you mentioned that there's the like campaign mode of the game where you sort of play out like a series of fights and it's got like a little mini narrative within it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
the idea of a a war game that like a, a it, it's it's a war game that simulates like the D and D dungeon, but only the war game elements of the dungeon. And you have to go through and like, I don't know if there'd be a GM position or maybe there'd just be like a board you're facing against to try and beat, but like just honing in on like the fighty bits. I feel like there's an opening there, you know, cause war gaming is, is platoon versus platoon, but maybe someone just wants to do the fighty bits, but like with their small group of characters, you know? Yeah, I'm sure that exists. It has to. I, I pr- Probably in some capacity, but I don't know of any. I mean, there's um, like tournament play in D&D where it's it's. Yeah, but that's that, not right? really like no nah, sort of. But you're still playing D&D. I'm talking about like kind of a kind of its own game designed around this concept where you remove the D&D and just focus on the fight. You know, hmm. Tournament play yeah, is sort of kind of that, but not 100. percent But I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, I, I, we should do some looking into that and see if that exists, because that might be worth doing. Uh, what? Wait, what are we calling these episodes now? Um, I, 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 we're not calling them anything yet. I mean, well, whatever, whatever we put on the title, but <laughs> tabletop. Sh- yeah, I'm calling this tabletop shout out because uh, okay, sure. We've done this a few times. We did this for Fabula Ultima. We did this for this I mean, game. Did, not exactly, but we didn't do a whole episode about that. Did we not? We should. No. I mean, we can, but we didn't. I think we should, because you like reading world books, and I like hyper fixating on things. Home, homeboy <laughs> so, really, really out here making me sound like a turbo nerd. God damn. Brother. It's just coming out. It's coming for me. Am I... Where is the goddamn lie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I deny this. Do you? Did you not read Simbarum and then Dungeon of the Mad Mage and like three other games? And you're like, oh, these look really fun. I don't want to play D anymore. I'm going to play these new games. I may have done that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Also, I don't know what what you were trying to say there for Dungeon of the Mad Mage, but that's a that's a D and D adventure. I don't. Oh, um, not the, what, what's it called? Shadow of the Weird Wizard? Shadow of the Weird Wizard, there we go. Wasn't Shadow, oh, of, Shadow the, of the Demon Lord. That's Demon what Lord saying. is what I was reading. Weird Wizard just recently came out. I know. Yeah, I meant Shadow of the Demon Lord. Look, Shadow of the Demon Lord, Dungeon of the Mad Mage, that, that's, they have sound very similar. They're, they're built on the same grammatical structure. Uh, sh- sure, yeah. Sure. Subject of the proper noun. <laughs> right, yes, yes. Anyway, yeah, Close that's it. that's Close. all I have. Close this Please. out. Um, tell them where they can. What? Tell them what they need to know. Oh, we so forgot we to say that, subscribe. Yeah, you should subscribe. Yeah, just just hit the subscribe button. Just just do that right now, please. That'd be nice. Yeah, subscribe. Uh, no, 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 that's it. I asked for nothing else. I'm a simple man. Oh, Don't I make mean, it more I'd appreciate a comment and a like. Don't ask for too much. Too many instructions, and people's brain turns off. Look, tell me if this at least got you slightly interested in building gunpla. That's what I want to know. <laughs> That's a fair. Yeah, and if Isaiah did, wants to know, do you want to build funny robots? Yeah, tell us do you want to play robots. funny robot game? I want to play funny robot game. And if you are building funny robots, send us a picture of your funny robots on Twitter before that explodes nu- in like a nuclear meltdown. Still hasn't yet, although they're removing the block button, maybe? Question mark? I don't know. No, no. So they're not removing the block button. You can still block people and they can't interact with you, but they can still see your stuff. Which. Why? One of the main reasons for blocking people was so that they couldn't. They couldn't see your stuff. See your stuff. Um, Because uh, the people, person in charge of Twitter are petulant and children. Yeah. Yeah. It's bad. It's something I think of. Uh-huh. Like a baby. No. Yeah, no, you're... Yep. That could really use a roundhouse kick to the side of the forehead, like... Yeah. Yeah. Preferably by, like, John Jones. John Jones? Jesus. Look, I would I would, I would, would say my, my main man, Chuck Liddell, the Iceman, but, you know, he's long since retired. I see, I see. 
Big, big Chuck Liddell stand back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's us. Uh, that's that's been such a scheduled a, a piece, motherfuckers. I don't know. Play giant robots. I, do something. <laughs> funny robot goes zoo. Oh, it's ma- wait. Ah, uh, funny robot make the Gundam. Not the- oh, I thought you were gonna gun tank. Woo! Gun tank. Woo! That's also a good one. Gun tank. Woo!